From the Keith Vincent Kale Studios in Patterson, New Jersey, Green Arrow Media proudly presents Is This Real? Tonight, the prophecies of Padre Pio. And now your host, JC3. Who wants better sex? And who wants better sex starting now? The best way to get started is go to adamandeve.com. Adam and Eve is offering 50% off just any item. But that's not all. When you select your one item, you will also get three bonus items. That includes a gift for him, a special gift for her, and a gift you'll both like. Plus six free movies. For your viewing pleasure and free shipping. There is discreet shipping as your privacy is priority. Plus 100% free shipping on your entire order. Doesn't matter how much you spend or what you buy. It will all be packaged and sent discreetly for free. Don't wait. Better Sex is just one click away. That's 50% off one item, three free gifts, six free movies, and free shipping. Bring more pleasure and satisfaction to your bedroom. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. It could be an adventurous new toy or anything you desire. Just enter code QUESTION at checkout. That's QUESTION, Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N at adamandeve.com. This exclusive offer is specific to this podcast only. So be sure at checkout you punch in the code QUESTION. That is Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N at checkout and get your 50% off one item, 10 free gifts, and free shipping. Remember, use code QUESTION. Also remember to listen to Is This Real every Sunday at 8 o'clock with new episodes starting July 16th. Remember, everybody, question everything and put that question at the end of your checkout. AdamandEve.com <laughs> Welcome, 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 everybody, to another fantastic episode of Is This Real? Is This Real? Tonight's episode, as you heard Big Joe say, we are talking about the prophecies of Sir Padre Pio. In the birth, birth, in the booth tonight, we have Big Joe next to me. Say hello, Big Joe. Hello, Big Joe. We have the Pope himself. Say hello. I'm the Pope. We have Izzy in the Hi. booth tonight. <laughs> and we have Mr. West behind the scenes. Hey, uh, and we are as you can see, we're talking and heard. We're talking about the prophecies of Padre Pio. This is our—I don't even know what episode this is. I don't know. Like, it's like, been so many. Like, I think we have two left. Two or have, three. I think I we have think two or three. No, left. I think we have two left. I think we have to still talk about the Scientology and the Book mm-hmm. of Revelations. I think that wraps I up think our that's season. It? I mean, I we can just look on, on is this real pc.com that's right i'm looking can. at that board over there and it's that says, board is wrong, wrong. that's board incorrect is wrong. joey gives us misinformation board is wrong fake news he's, he's just like he is <laughs> yes news. He's right. we do have two episodes left is the book of revelation and scientology yes that board is but wrong let's get into the pod jpo prediction so yes um who wants to start off do you, dad do you want to start off tonight i'll start off i you know uh, just a little background on the guy he was he lived to be 81 years old Born in Italy, uh, had visions at a very young age. Um, uh, they they call them um, religious um, ecstasies. I know before you guys jump all over that, what it is is he had visions that were uh, brought to him when he was very young about different aspects of the Catholic Church and different things that he saw coming on, and uh, he also was um, blessed, I guess, with uh, what they call stigmata, which would have been the Holes in the hands and feet of uh, Jesus Christ. Um, some people believe it. Some people think it's just a, it's a disease. It's a certain disease or whatever. But he knew at five years old he wanted to be a priest. He knew very very early on. Uh, patron saint of the Exorcist, and that's not the movie. I know people asked me that before. Uh, what else do we got? Um, well, he did. He made some statements very early on, and they call them the prophecies. And we can read them off and see if they make any sense to you guys. Well, see, that's what I like to do, especially when it comes to like uh, religious stuff. I do like to read what they like, particularly said and mm-hmm. interpret ours. Like we're, we're all coming from different sides here. Like Anthony's not so much religious. I'm in intermediate. I know you know uh, Isaiah. You do. Uh, follow your beliefs and stuff like that and dad is the same thing and so does Wes. Wes uh, you know 
we all have our views of, you know, beliefs in this booth. And then we sit, I like to take everybody's point of view of what this man's trying to say, if you believe it or not. Mm. Like, let's just put it like, because this is your first episode this season, uh, Izzy. Do you, right. do you believe in predictions, like prophecies? Do you believe that those things can come true or not? Yeah, the 12 disciples, they all had a, they all wrote a book in the Bible. I believe them. But who is this? Padre? Padre Pio. Padre Pio. No, I'm not buying this malarkey. So. <laughs> you didn't even hear what he said. I mean, I... I, I have an open mind, but, but because I he, his stuff never made like it obviously came out well, after the Bible, and also it, uh, in in your religion, you guys don't believe in saints, right? No, no yeah. saints. They don't believe in saints. He's Just a saint. The apostles. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah, so that that makes more sense of why he wouldn't believe in stuff. Padre Pio says that Padre Pio is a saint. I mean, even though he did leave, live canonized you know? in two thousand and two. Yeah. So. Um, should we just start off by talking sure, about let's it? Let's talk about the prophecies. I'm interested because I don't know. So I mean, I this. I have 12 prophetic messages from Saint Padre. Other than his connection to uh, the Warrens, I really don't know anything about Padre. Pio. Now, are we going to ask these? You know, and if they came true, or are they coming true, or does it look like they're on, well, let's on the see, horizon? Let's, well, let's make that determination. You know? Let's let. How about we read the prophecies and then, uh, we'll chit chat, chit chat about each. All right, uh, I, got, yeah, I have 12 okay. of them right here. Yeah, I got the same. And Wes, we can get your intake on it also. Sure. Um, because, again, this is definitely something that it's one of these things, just like uh, when we went through the Nostradamus episode. Yeah. It's vague. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. So the first one here. Ready? Uh, the world is walking in ruins. Men have abandoned the right path to venture on roads that end in the desert of violence. If they do not drink from the source of humility, charity and love, it will be a catastrophe. We'll start with you, Anthony. What do you think that means? I don't think it's prophecy at all. I think it's an observation. It, it, it's it's. I, I have it here on my phone as well because I did pull it up um, when I was Googling. The world is walking in ruins. You know, the idea, okay, men have abandoned the right path to venture on roads that end in the desert of violence. Now, this is very beautifully written, but it's like, simply put, violent ends, violent means to it gets a violent end. Like, we don't do the thing. We don't honor your neighbor anymore. We just... We do what's best for ourselves, and if it gets violent, too fucking bad. I'm going to do what I can to win. Like that last part, if they don't drink from the source of humility, charity, and love, it'll be a catastrophe. What's the source of those three things? You would think it would be God. If you don't follow God's ideas or plans, then it's not going to end well. That's all he's saying. That's not really prophetic. That's just an observation. Right. I don't disagree with him, but it's not prophecy. Is he? Yeah, same thing. It's just a, he's just making a statement. You know, if you don't follow the footsteps of being cherishable or have love, then you're going to, I don't know, I guess you're not adding anything into this world. So, I mean, it's very broad, you know. It's not anything. He's just making a statement. He's not prophesizing anything. All right. Wes? Um, can you repeat it again? The world is walking in ruins. Men have abandoned the right path to venture on the roads that end in uh, the desert of violence. If they do not drink from the source of humility, charity, and love, it will be cat a catastrophe. It just sounds like a, it just sounds like he's summarizing parts of like of scripture. It doesn't sound like a prophetic vision whatsoever to me. All right, Dad, you got to understand too the context of what he's saying. This this was 1959. When he supposedly had this uh, revelation, and uh, he wrote a letter to his superiors, and he stated uh, what the revelations were about, and, and this is one of them. And they're going to keep it here with only twelve of them. You know, I'm sure you can find the rest of them. In 1959, you were just coming out of Korea. There was another war. That's our third war, or our second war, third war in 40 years. Okay, the innocence of the United States, the innocence, innocence of the world, was kind of lost at that time. You had, you know, we were, the nuclear uh, arms race was just starting. The Cold War was just about to heat up, okay? People were doing their own things. There, were, there was no longer a, a sense of, you know, love thy neighbor. How many times have you heard over the years, people that were coming out of their 40s and, and early 50s, even the 30s, would say, you know, we never locked our doors. We didn't have to. You know, we trusted our neighbor. We trusted everybody else. This wasn't happening then. And so... At that point, he's getting this revelation supposedly from God, and it kind of fits into that point in time. Yeah. So I do believe 
that he I, I do believe Padre Pio was a very pious man. I do believe he had visions. Um, and that's just a personal observation. But I do believe uh, what he and I agree with Izzy, what he says, he's just basically saying what, what everybody's thinking at that time. You know? So maybe that's, maybe he went to bed one night and was thinking that and he thought it was a revelation. Hard to say. But in that situation in 1959, I, I do think that this might have been prophetic to a point. And don't forget, after the 50s, I didn't realize he made it in 59. Mm-hmm. 50 to 54 was the age of McCarthyism, which yeah. everyone was being hunted. You know, yeah. it was mm-hmm. the, it, it, nobody loved your neighbor. Everyone was ratting their neighbor out. Yeah. So the, look at like, it, is this really from God or is this an observation of the times that he was living in? No, I, I, I agree. I mean, for my particular view, I'm, I'm just trying to sit there and like wrap my head around history and trying to figure out if there's anything from that particular time period on that he could have been referencing if he was trying to reference something. Mm -hmm. But again, I do think this is just a plain straight out like observation more than just a, like a prophecy. You know, Uh, there's nothing really down packed in which he's talking about that. I think is more like, yes, he was specifically referencing this or, I mean, you could say that about from 59 on all the way to today. Like you could still use this, Absolutely. And, it, you know, if you believe in it, like, oh, this can still apply to today. So, all right, we'll do uh, number two then. Uh, terrible things will come. I can no longer intercede for man. Divine piety, piety, oh, piety, piety, piety is about to end. Man had been created to love life and ended up destroying life. Mm-hmm. So we'll start off with you again, Anthony. Oh, this is, I mean, he says it right there. I can no longer intercede for men. You know, like, I can't do this. We fucked up. You, We can't fix this. Bad shit's about to happen, and you guys fucked it all up. That's what it, That's what I'm reading this as. You know, again, it's not a prophecy. I mean, he's saying that divine pri- pr- uh, piety is about to end. Okay. Doesn't say how. I mean, it's just, he's blaming men, essentially. You fucked up, and guess what? It's all bad now. It's all fucked. That's all I'm getting from that statement. And how about you, Izzy? Uh, it's just another observation. I mean, him being, you know, not so long ago, what, he died in 1960 or something? 68. 68. So, I mean, he's just observing how the world is going. The world isn't perfect. It hasn't been perfect ever. So he's just making another observation, you know? Just yeah, from yeah. scripture and the the laws of being Catholic and stuff, and the world is not following in those footsteps, so... He's just saying the same thing. And put in the times of how it was back in the 60s. You're talking he died in 68, so he saw... I mean, granted, he saw the wars, the wars but at yeah. the same time, he saw a president be murdered. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. it was in, if this was in 59, no, he did not. He didn't see any more. 59. 59. Well, this this all came in 59? 1959. Okay, then no, don't. Right. But so, like, yeah, so he still saw the horrors of Korea in World War II. Yeah, I mean, like, especially World War II, and, you know, we all know what the fuck happened. All right, uh, Wes... Uh, uh, just another vague observation for me. Uh, there's nothing. It it just it just sounds like too. It just sounds too like relevant. You know what I mean? It doesn't sound like anything like grand prophecy. Like, it doesn't sound like it's coming from big guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, from <laughs> big guy. I no, agree because I don't. I don't believe that. To me, they don't sound like prophecies. Prophecy is like this is going to happen. It's going to happen this time. You know, Nostradamus type but stuff. But the thing is, like, these are statements. When you're looking at it, especially how they're, they're, I guess, what's the word? Um, I'm drawing a blank on the word. You know how they how they're talking about them? They, they turn around. And they're like, well, these are prophecies. Like, so like, how could you sit there and declare what is a prophecy, well, what's not? Well, here's you know? the thing. I think let's skip the third one, right? Because mm-hmm. I the fourth one as I'm reading, I think is. It, it, it's definitely in the wheelhouse of prophecy. Prepare to live in three days in total darkness. That's a warning, right? Mm-hmm. That's to me what a prophecy is. It's, it's the foretelling of events that have yet to come. Prepare to live in three days in total darkness. These three days are very close, and in these days they will remain as dead without eating or drinking. Then the light will return, but many more will be, but many will be the men who will not see the light anymore. Three days of darkness. What could he talk? What? Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. And in these days, they will remain as dead without eating or drinking. 
what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Well, see, that's the thing. You don't know. You don't. He, it has. He, he, it may not have happened. Kind of sounds like a famine that's there's, yet to come. There's places in the world that doesn't see the light of day. It's just dark all day. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. That'd be an eclipse. Well, like a uh, disease or a. Uh, can an I eclip- stre- an eclipse? Can yeah, I stretch? Eclipse? Can I stretch something out yeah. here? Yeah. It's a very big stretch, but coming from a big guy. Fuck you. <laughs> but. Three days of darkness. What? Uh-huh. Both Kennedy assassination days and Martin Luther King being shot. So, fuck Malcolm X? Yeah. Who's a, who's a bigger person, Malcolm X or, or, or fucking Martin Luther King? They were both. They're on par with each other. Yeah. I they took different part. strides, but they wanted the same thing. The, you can't say, that, like, okay, let's, let's, let's think about who was killed. Who's, who, you know, you're, you're applying what happened. To, to try and make up and say this is what he was talking about. And in reality, you can say that from any point of view. Like, who's to say that those are the three days? What if the three days well, are something okay. that are well, what I'm, the what last I'm, 10 years? I think he's talking about, like, three consecutive days. Like, boom, boom, well, boom. that's and you, you can interpret it. Like, that's what I'm it saying. It could also like, be, like, how God interprets a day because uh, – uh, from my understanding in scripture, a day is like the equivalent to like a year or a millennium or whatever. There's no rules. You well, my my, my thing is Especially when we're he... going to go off of like God's time and stuff, too, because if it's a if it's a, if it's a day like a day for God is like a year or a decade for us. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, what if, if I'm going to sit there and again, this we could sit there and interpret it for, for days because, you know, there's no specific meaning, stuff like that. Like for me, when it when it comes to something like like that like i the reason i my, my mind goes specifically those three days because yes you do he the malcolm x killing assassination assassination what was a dark blip on the calendar i'm not going to say it's not sure was i understand that but from history's perspective when you talk about both the kennedy assassinations and Martin Luther King, it for me, it, it goes into the the last line. Again, this is just from my perspective. Then the light will return, meaning the days move on. But many, like Dad's generation, the generation that was being born, and Mamas and all that, the light will never seem like the light anymore. Many of these, many will be the men who will not see it anymore. I'm gonna so go, the I- innocence was gone. Oh, you're thinking the innocence. Yeah, the innocence of man was gone. Yeah, it's still a hard stretch, but I understand what you're saying. So, like, the guy, that's... remember that. What? The guy, remember that. That's what I'm saying. Like, like for for me, like Dad that says this all the time. Like the innocence of the 50s and and, and the 40s. Granted, there was horrible times there, but there's still a, a sense of innocence in that that times. Throughout the 60s, that was all ripped away with everything that happened in the 60s. And those those three moments, the both assassinations of the of the Kennedys, and the Martin Luther King murder, assassination. Well, Martin Luther King was also assassinated. That, I know. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like those are are three big things in the '60s that, to me, just exemplify what how the innocence of the previous decades just wiped away, including the the war in, uh, of Vietnam and stuff like that. You know, these things that that turn around, it's like everyone's eyes were opening up to what was happening in the world. And we weren't just, oh, TV has color. I don't know. I I think it's too vague to say that those are the days specifically. That's what I'm saying. The according to the Catholic Church, they have no clue what he's talking about. (laughs) What they can say is the Catholic Church do know. Okay, what they can say is about the three days of darkness. In certain Catholic prophecy circles, there's a concept (laughs) known as a three day of darkness according to which a judgment will come upon the earth and the earth will be preternaturally shrouded in darkness. One of the most famous quotations about this event is attributed to the Italian mystic by Anna Marie Tejia, whatever, is said to have stated, there shall come over, I'm sorry, there shall come over the whole earth an intense darkness lasting three days and three nights. Nothing can be seen and the air will be laden with pestilence which will claim mainly, but not only, the enemies of religion. It will be impossible to use any man-made lighting during this darkness, except blessed candles. 
He who, he who out of curiosity opens his window to look out or leaves his home will fall dead on the spot. During, the three, during these three days, people should remain in their homes, pray the rosary, and beg God for mercy. When the all the, all the enemies happen? of the church, whether known or unknown, will perish over the whole earth during universal darkness. With the exception of, the, of a few whom God will soon convert, the air shall be infected by demons who will appear under all sorts of hideous forms. So according to this woman, it's the end of days when we all get judged, apparently, like in the Bible. So if you go to get, you know, if DoorDash drops off your delivery and you go to get it, you're going to drop dead? That's fucked up. Well, DoorDash is not getting there because... Yeah, they're dropping dead too. And they have blessed yeah. candles. I have not seen that on their Amazon wish page. Like, where are blessed candles? Well, like, the, they're the images with Jesus in them. Yeah. That. Anyone oh, can the make ones you those. get from the bodega? It, it goes yeah. really... Yeah, exactly. The no, one your grandma, the one, the gra- the one the grandma and the Thea's be using. A bunch of malarkey. Anyone can make a Jesus candle. It doesn't make it blessed. Do you mean like it has to be blessed by a priest? Or are these like holy LED candles? Are they battery powered? Or, or like do they sell matches with They're it? powered by the Holy Spirit. There's you gotta so get them many from questions. your local Catholic church. There are so For many 49. questions. 49 And uh, let's just... Let, let's put that part... On the back burner for a second, three days of darkness in which the world is covered, and if you open up your window, you die instantly. First of all, that has never happened, and there's no reasonable. Well, this is let me again. Finish. This is not Padre Pio. I saying understand that, that but like COVID twenty. There's no reasonable thing that can make that happen. Where it's just pitch black outside for three days. There's no thing there's nothing in the universe that we've observed that can make that happen. There's nothing on earth that we have seen that can make and that he happen. And you said mankind lights won't work. Yeah, th- that's not a thing. That's not a thing. I don't know. There's no solar eclipse well, that lasts no. for yeah. three days. Even during an eclipse, you still get some light. I think what you're doing is you're taking this to the extreme. I think you know what you just let it be for on its surface. What do you mean? He made a statement. Let's see if it comes no, true. I'm, I'm shredding that person. Yeah, he's, he's shredding no. that. He's not because shredding there, that. That to me is prophecy. And mm-hmm. that's going, no, this is going to happen. Be prepared for it. Make sure yeah, you Yeah, like that paper. was broad and direct. Like, this is what's going to happen. Just stay in your homes and pray for mercy. Is that really what God wants? Everyone just to cut, hunker down and pray for I don't know. I've never interviewed days. God. But if he wants to come on the podcast, I mean, we can bring, I'll set him up another chair. Not a problem. He could have mine. <laughs> uh, I would love to be sponsored. We're going to take uh, a, a break. <laughs> so you brought by Jesus. And we'll get more because there are a little bit more that he actually is talking about uh, prophecies. So we'll be right back. Uh, please go listen to some of our sponsors. Hey, everybody. We're just letting you know that we have new merch in our store. Go to Green Hour Media Store dot myspreadshop dot com, greenhourmedia.org, or the link in the bio for our first ever logo drop. The Cryptic Collection is here. Get your favorite cryptids such as Bigfoot, Mothman, Nessie, the Yeti, or the Jersey Devil on t-shirts, hats, or mugs. You can also get all of our podcast logos on various items as well. Remember, that's greenhourmediastore.myspreadshop.com, greenhourmedia.org, or the link in the bio. New episodes of Is This Real drop Sundays at 8. Question everything. Hey everybody, I'm JC3. And I'm Mr. West. And, and this, this episode, episode is brought to you by Dubby. Dubby. Made by professionals in the USA, Dubby was formulated to give you focus and energy with no jitters or crash. No jitters. Their formula contains vitamins, amino acids, including the patented Neurofactor. Neurofactor. You know what Dubby doesn't give you? What is that? No calories, no, calories. no, sugars, no sugars, no fillers, no fillers, and no artificial flavors. <laughs> When the raw ingredients arrive to their FDA registered and inspected facility that strictly adheres to GMP guidelines, they undergo a quarantine while a small sample of each ingredient is taken to test for any impurities, while also being tested to ensure that the ingredients are actually what they are supposed to be and have the proper dosage. And once the ingredients pass all the tests, then they're cleared to get mixed into the formula. 
So head on over to w.gg and use our offer code is this real PC for 10% off your first order. That's d u b b y g g and use the code is this real PC for 10% off. They have great flavors such as Galaxy Grenade, Dub Sludge, Pass and Joy Tea, Monkey Madness, and Dragonade. My personal favorite. Dragonade Dragon right here. I got Dragonade right here. Delicious. Drink Dubby and be better. These products are not intended to diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. And welcome back to our Padre Pio predictions episode. And that's a lot of P's in a word, like Padre yeah, Pio yeah, prediction. Yeah, good alliteration. Padre Pio. So, Daddy Pio. We just talked about the three days of darkness. Uh-huh. Um, and let's get through a couple of these more because uh, he does really talk about, like, you know, predictions. All right, so let's go, let's go with the fifth one right here. Many people will escape scared. Right off the bat, you have my attention. <laughs> Many people escape scared. They will run without a goal. People will say there is uh, that there is salvation to the east, and people will run to the east, but they will fall off a cliff. They will say that there the that to the west there is salvation, and people will run to the west, but they will fall into a furnace. What the fuck does that mean? Can That's... I have map quest here? What the fuck are we talking about? So the about? east is a cliff, the west is a furnace. That's right. Yes. So we have to move to Nebraska to be in order so to be So it's safe. either north or south. Where's his direction? Holy shit, Joseph going? Smith the Mormon was right. The Garden of Eden was in Jackson County, Missouri. Uh, <laughs> west, <laughs> comment? Uh, I actually like that one. That like one, it? that one, uh... You gotta get on a pillow? Huh? You gotta get on a pillow? No, 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 not on a, not on a pillow, but... That one, that one definitely is, um, I like, I like it because from my interpretation of that, it sounds like they're going to, people are going to think that salvation is in the East and just given how like a lot of the, the way of the world is, people are are leaning towards more of the Eastern way of, of, um, traditionalism, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, that sort of salvation, I guess you could say, but then there's the cliff where, you know, it'll leave you hanging or you'll just fall off that cliff. And then the West where we're in right now is just burning to hell. So, <laughs> so you I mean, depending that. where you're standing at the moment, well, no, yeah. like I mean, geographically West is always West. East is always East. No, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah but, but like California is West of us and we're on the East coast of yeah. the United States. Yeah. Like what is, what is, it, is it like where you have to run to China and then all of a sudden that's like that where the cliff is. Well, What's isn't California furnace? on fire right now? Well, I can see the furnace it's always being on fire. Like Yellowstone National Park is, but you know they have an active volcano somewhere, and it's set to explode. In wipe Yellowstone, out. Yellowstone, exactly. <laughs> it's it's gonna wipe out half the fucking country when it finally does go You're boom. An asshole, right? Rip is gonna stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, there's the west, and there's a big furnace, and the east, there's no cliffs on the east. Like we don't have any cliffs here. The, the Himalayan coastline. mountains, huh? The Himalayan mountains. That's in the Far East. I'm just talking about the United States. Now, if you're talking globally, that's a different story. Well, Dad? I'm really not sure what any of that, that last one means. I, I'm trying to dig up something. You got, the, you got the furnace, and you got the cliff, and you got to move to Iowa in order to be safe. Well, if you're running to the east, and you're going to jump off, you're going to fall off a cliff. There's not too many cliffs in the east. You know, well, the, you, east of the United States. I mean, he's standing here. What about the Far East? At? What about Japan, China, all those... They're all the east. None of them have cliffs either. I don't know. I've never been there. Well, if you go out to the west coast, you know. Well, there's cliffs in the west coast, but only in the, there's cliffs out in the west, but that's in the United States. But in the west, supposed to be a furnace. Mm. So I think he got his he got his predictions yeah, backwards. I'm, I'm, I'm baffled by I don't this know one. What the fuck he's talking about here? All right, but we'll go on to the next one. Confusion, right? equal confusion on, on yeah, everything. We, we, equal the confusion. I yeah. am confusion. All right. Uh, the earth will tremble and the panic will be great. Mm. The earth is sick. The earthquake will be like a snake. They will feel it crawling everywhere. Mm. And many stones will fall and many men will perish. All right. This seems more like a prophecy to me. No, no, no. This one. No, this one. Now, I, got, I could get behind this one, too. This one was clear. This one, yeah. Well, yeah. see, like, if you were to take this, this first line alone, be like, oh, it's COVID. The earth will tremble and the panic will be great. I, and the I was earth thinking, is sick. I was thinking more of uh, California is about to fucking exactly uh, go kaplutz. So I'm was he like, like sitting there talking about California exclusively? No, I'm thinking like Florida's the, gonna fall off. I'm thinking more like something. Something's falling. Like I just said, the Yellowstone supervolcano. When that thing finally fucking goes, it's gonna reshape. Well, I mean, Canada, the United States, a lot of it. And if it's gonna be that 
if it's going to be as big as a lot of scientists think it's going to be, it will be felt off very far off, like miles and miles and miles away. Yeah, are we supposed to be gonna gonna like get covered in like smoke for but days? Isn't he and just years talking about an earthquake? A very big. That's one. what that's what I was thinking. I mean, if you start reading the second okay, line, so how is this a prophecy? We're saying an earthquake's gonna happen, which like spoiler alert, earthquakes happen. Right, I can make that prophecy right now. Yeah, am I a am I a prophet? No, no, no. But that's the thing. It doesn't have to be proven. But like, I think like that's definitely of the nature of a prophecy. It's saying, hey, this thing hasn't happened yet, but it will. It's like, oh, okay. Thanks. Dad? Yeah, I think there should be rules. Somebody should regulate that. Like Read me that one. one again. The earth will tremble and the panic will be great. The earth is sick. The earthquake will be like a snake that will feel it crawling. Uh, they will feel it crawling everywhere, and many stones will fall and many men will perish. That's pretty much, uh, you know, the Book of Revelations type of stuff where you know, at the end of the world and, you know, it's going to come in this big production. It's not going to just you know, say, hey, we're here. You know, you go here, you go here. It's going to be, you know, you're going to get the end of the world. You're going to get people that are going to be once. Let's put it into, into perspective. You know, tomorrow morning, you know, you wake up and you start seeing the earth shaking and, you know, people aren't sitting around going, oh, that's peculiar. They're getting up and they're running. They're scared shit because they don't know what's going on. And then. If Jesus rises out of a mountain and they go, shit, he is coming back and he is here to judge the living and the dead, they're going to panic and they're going to just, you know, they're going to lose the rabbit ass minds because, you know, people who haven't been living or walking with the Lord are now going to go, well, pick me, pick me. And he's going to go, no, no, I'm sorry. So, so yeah, panic will ensue. Okay, so he's predicting that the end of time will be a big earthquake. Yeah. One of them. Well, I've, I've heard, me. I've heard that. And mass confusion. And we'll talk more about that. I thought that it was a trumpet. Talk. The trumpet is also... Actually, have you heard... Like, I don't know, maybe we'll play it on the thing later, but like... And you'll still have a bunch of people outside the event going, you know, a t-shirt, t-shirt, three for five dollars. There's... There in, in I forgot what country it was, but people were hearing large trumpets in the sky. Nobody was hearing fucking trumpets in the no, sky. No, it, it's, it's, it's not trumpets per se. Did this but motherfucker not just it like... It sounds like trumpets, okay. and no one can explain what's going on. I'm sure there's a reason why. Yes, well, we, we know. Until you we can know, explain you know, it. You're, you're a realist. Our theories is as good as yours. So. Understood. Goddamn That's pessimist. Uh, Let's not forget, you also had a group of people uh, back in 2016 going that this is the sign of the end times because trumpets will reign, and they said Trump... And Pence, the president and the vice president. When you put their names together, it's trumpets. Just saying. Don't don't. I'm start. just no. saying that's what it, people thought that shit. Why we gotta make for the love local. of fuck? I'm just saying people thought that was the end. Time. So we're going to the number seven. All right. Gavin Newsom is the Antichrist. So I'm going to tell you. You are like ants, because hey. the time will come when men will take their eyes off of that which is godly, for a crumb of bread. Businesses will be looted, warehouses will be taken in assault, and destroyed. A poor person will be one who, in those dark days, will be without a cattle, uh, candle. Sorry, they'll be without a cattle also. <laughs> With, <laughs> without a jug of water and without what is necessary for three months. So is this fucking rule of three with this guy. This just sounds like COVID. It does sound like COVID. Hold on, you're like ants because the time will come when men will take their eyes off of what is godly for a crumb of bread. Well, if I'm hungry and I'm praying and there's no food and I find a crumb of bread. That's not what he means. I what, understand. He, what he means but here. Hold on, the second you part. Businesses literal will be motherfucker. Lo- businesses will be looted. Wow. Warehouses will be so- taken and destroyed. Um, that just sounds like California. Right now. Right now. That's exactly you know, what I was going to say. And then, like, uh, a poor person will be one who, in those dark days, will be without a candle, without a jug of water, and will be out with it's necessary for three months. Well, if they're poor, that, they don't it, have them, period. I'm going to say, like, yeah, poor, poor people don't have candles to begin with. Hmm. And they don't, don't have cattle. They do not have any cattle. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard for a poor person to take care of livestock. Yeah, I but, think the, 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 fr- the especially first in this line, economy. the first line says it all. And you're like it, ants because the time will come. No, uh, because no, the time the will come line. when men will take will take their eyes off of, um, of that, that which, which is godly. godly for a crumb of bread. For a crumb of bread, which is exactly what it is. People will sell their souls at this point. 
Don't give a fuck about what happens to them. There's a difference between okay, selling there, there, your soul there, there, for and something. I think it's because of drugs. I think it's because of pestilence. I think it's because of of uh, unholy shit that's going on in the world. Taylor and Swift. People don't care. They just want now. They want instant satisfaction, instant gratification, and don't care what's going. You know, there's a line. And I'm going to say this, and you know, Uh-oh. see if it, you want to go with it. Once someone once said, "A man will sell his soul for a hundred thousand for a million dollars." To do something evil, when when you die, your soul is worth much, much, much more. Uh-huh. And that, to me, that's soul. exactly what I think oh. the guy's what he's talking here. You're gonna sell it for something that doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, give me that Cadillac. I want that Cadillac. You know, and I don't give a shit. I got that. Well, pray to God. I win. I pray to Satan. I win the lottery. I sell my soul for right, three. Sell your soul to the devil for whatever, for something small and minute. That <laughs> in the real no, day, in the real world, you know, your soul is going to be worth much, much more when you pass away. I'm kidding. My soul is worth more than a beamer. Uh-huh. Like, Here we go. The idea of like, okay, people will take their eyes off what the, the godly for a crumb of bread. That to me sounds like I'm a poor person and I need something because I'm hungry. And I'm desperate. Not someone who's like, well, I need a beamer. Uh, hold on. Well, it's not <sighs> like I need food and fucking water and basic living materials. Yeah. I mean, you could sit she there. Went to school. You could take it both ways, though. <laughs> if you look at it, like, like if you turn around and like uh, this person's going to take his eyes off of uh, off of religion, off of God, off of being a holy person for a crumb of bed. That means, uh, you know, you could take it as like someone's being distracted by just anything the ultimate thing is earthly wants there's a there's a difference between wants and needs and i think what if he's comparing the earthly wants the things you desire which ultimately have no substance in the next life or the kingdom of heaven or whatever you want to say if that's what it is and that those things are as, as significant as a crumb of bread which fine i can get behind that logic but that's not what it's hard to interpret that because it's not clear enough He's not saying that the things you want in life that are not necessary. Well, that's what happens to all predictions. They're not clear enough for anything. You can interpret them for anything. Yeah, it's like a car, when you value it, means nothing in the eyes of the Lord. It is less than a crumb of bread. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Or are you saying that people will sell their souls because they're fucking broke and have no money and they're hungry? Man, I think that's way too literal. Mm. But, uh, I mean, I think it's, you can... The whole thing speaks both. for itself. It really does. I honestly think you could sit there and say that, that the the do it in both ways for something that they want and because they're hungry well if it's something you need or something you want you're gonna want you're, you have you need well, that i mean thing to either live. way though you don't sit there and sell your soul for anything yeah that's true it's the bad return on i investment. mean again if you if you sit there and i know there's a lot of people who sit there and don't believe in souls and stuff like that and i'm not you know if you believe in souls and you believe this is something that you have and you possess and 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 you want to go to heaven and you want to do all that stuff like this is something like you never sell that for anything, no matter what it is, because you're always gonna, you're always gonna have that peace. Whenever you do pass, did he away. say so? Uh, no, I think no. what you got here is something metaphoric, and I'm gonna. The more I'm reading it, the more it comes, it's like bingo. The poor will be one who those. Oh, I'm sorry, poor will be one who in the days of darkness will be without a candle, without a jug of water. And without the necessary for three months. What does that say to you? The days leading up to the election. It means we're going to have a very, very light summer. No, what it says is <laughs> the poor, the people that aren't going to survive this purge of Jesus Christ or of God will be the ones that are unprepared. If You're, you're unprepared if you don't have a candle you That's can't right. see. You don't have water you can't drink. You don't have food you so, can't eat. Well, that, you're I, unprepared hold on, hold on. in the ways of getting, well, getting to the I, Lord. I think we're, we're all wow. miss. Uh, misreading as I think far we're as just all interpreting it our own way. Well, no, but you could sit there and say the poor, meaning wealthy poor, or just the poor of spirit. Okay, you can sit there and do that. If my point is too fucking vague, it, it, it's very vague. Again, that's what these are. Excuse me, sir, but the, that's what these are. Like you could sit there and and they 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 are vague. But if you want to sit there and turn around and be like, look, you're not physically like money poor. But if you're spiritually poor, if you've lost your way from God, from religion, from whatever, when the time comes, as Dad says, and Jesus is upon us, then you'll be left in the fuck behind. Like that—that's—that's that's what it is. Like, Maybe. I don't know. 
I next think one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go take to the it. next one. I like okay. the next one. Yeah. No, hold on. Did you have something? Yeah, I was gonna take it for what it was. I just think he means like your back's against the wall. You're gonna give up your belief to. You're gonna throw all your godly way. Like your back's against the wall. You're gonna commit whatever you have to commit because you're poor. So from him being, well, nothing against Catholics, but Catholics was all about a money type of thing. So he could be saying really just straight out, like the poor are going to suffer. Their backs are going to be against the wall and they're going to throw out their godly ways. It's going to be one of the first things they're going to get rid of, you know? All right. Coming from that perspective, then uh, put yourself in that situation. Would you throw your your, your faith away if you were in the corner? No. No? You? No. No. Wes? No, I wouldn't. Would I throw my faith away if I was in a corner? Yeah, backed away in the corner. If you had little options, it was just, and it depends on whether you what you're you're meaning by throwing your faith away. Like some people were like, "Well, I'm not going to strip so I can get money." Like that's no, throwing I my think, faith I away. Think... I'm not going to show my dick on the internet. You lying motherfucker! All oh, right. Just think of the lions that were being eaten in, in the in the Colosseum in Rome. Lions. They were told to get. They were told to give up their faith, or they will be lion food. And 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 hundreds of them were put to their death because they wouldn't give up their faith. You know, my faith is my faith, and you can have the lions have at it. The lions weren't being eaten. The lions were eating. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. yeah the lions okay. were. Christ, like, Christians were used for sport in early, in, yeah, in their early plus days. You had your, yeah. They had the gamble. It was an economy stir, you know. But to, but to answer your question, I don't think I would uh, abandon my faith for. Uh, Dad? Fuck no, 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 not a chance. Not a chance. I don't think I would. I either. like this next one. All right, uh, number eight. A land will disappear. A great land. The best land. One of the greatest lands ever. A country will be erased forever from geographical can I read these, maps. Can I read all these is Trump, and with it, history, That's wealth. Never ever seen a land like that. And men will be dragged into the mud. Atlantis. Fuck you. Oh, come on. I'm thinking about Palestine with that one. I, I'm thinking like. I don't think to is, me. I mean, the, I mean, it's right there. The ocean's right there. I mean, what, I'm not, not, no, I'm not even trying to be funny with it either. Like. Because you said the a country sea is right there. Because you said a country is going to be eradicated, and pretty much like Palestine's being eradicated. They can't flee west. Well, let's just put they're it like being this. eradicated because they can't flee. No, 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 no. I'm saying like they can't like like geographically they can't flee west. Well, first because of all, the ocean's there, this is going to be very, very there. controversial, and I don't give a shit. They're eradicating each other. Oh no. Okay. Oh. It's not one or the other. They're both eradicating each other, and I don't give a fuck what anybody tells me. Okay. Are they a great land? I mean, what is a great land? It's a holy land. Palestine? Well, yeah. Palestine, well, I mean, Israel, the, Israel, the holy lands, if you believe that area, it was... Palestine? That's not a part of Israel. What? No. Is it? No. Um, no. Well, like, technically speaking... No, no, we no. can we can we can no, talk no, no. about this. We can talk about we this another time. This one Anywho, we can could, talk you, about this. could you apply this one to the United States? How do you wipe it off geographically? Oh, I mean, Earthquake. You, again, you're talking too I mean, literal Yellowstone, also. Well, yellow, we should just make this about Yellowstone, because that's what I keep going to. <laughs> again, you could take this literal, or you could take this as far as, like, uh, uh, maybe something have, else. Like, can we say that countries have been erased? Like, that's happened? Yeah, I mean, Schmittler tried doing that for a hot minute. Well, go back to number six, because if there's a big earthquake and, and it's going to be uh, coming through the land like a snake, it's going to take out a lot of land. You know, and how many I people get, nowadays get, tell you that California is going to be wiped off the map in a hundred years? You can sit there and take that very literal. Like you, this, it's, it's a literal take. If you want to take it more metaphorical, I hope it strikes Canada. <laughs> if you want to take it more metaphorical, meaning a country is going to be destroyed by not having the faith in the in in, in the people not having faith or anything like that, and you could sit there and take it that way. Hold on, mm-hmm. he says geographical maps. He is talking about science. Like we've that's the whole thing I've been saying this whole time. Hawaii. Like, what is he talking about? Hawaii's East, not a country, West. West. Hawaii's he's saying, a state. He's saying that there is a piece of Cuba. physical land that's going to be wiped away forever. Maybe it's Australia, and God was like, he pulls a swerve on us. That's not a great island. That's not a great land. Australia's not a great land. What is your beef with Australia? <laughs> Fuck them niggas. They're kangaroos and marsupials. <laughs> then Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, came from Australia. Yeah, and Australia took him out too, so fuck them niggas. No, ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Go to number nine, Joe. Number nine. Go to number nine. The Respectfully, love, I love them though. The love of man for man has become an empty word. How can you expect Jesus to love you if you do not love those who eat at your own table? 
of the wrath of God, men of science will not be forgiven, but only men of heart. I like that one. Damn, he portrayed an Anthony. I like that one. Yo, he portrayed like, an Anthony. I like, I, like, I, like, I, like, I like that one. I, with I, the, with you being pointed out real quick, Anthony, do you want to respond? I agree with what he's saying. Up you until think you're going to be eradicated? No, no, I agree with what he's saying up until the men of science. That is a won. big bolt of lightning. I no. Here's the thing. I don't. Be, I'm not an atheist, and I don't believe that there is any scientist, regardless of how uh, they're proving that uh, shrinking god theory. Yeah, exactly. No matter how much they utilize the shrinking god theory or further that theory, they'll ever be able to eradicate God. I'm not an atheist for that sole reason. So I do agree with what he's saying. And I think when he says men of science will not be forgiven, I think it's those who are saying that eventually science will explain everything, including God. And that's not going to happen. That's not possible. Because I I think he's talking about like Nazis and shit. You can't come. You can't have something from nothing. Talking about Nazis. And science is. And you have some scientists who are trying to. Nazis were done by 59 West. They still won't be forgiven. That's no, true. that's uh... you can't have something from nothing, and that's something that sparked everything is God. And that's what I believe on a personal level. Well, you got to also understand too that the science tries to manipulate stuff that's you know given to us. Where I mean, they, they, with all the cloning and and all the stuff like that, whether you're for abortion or against abortion, still has to filter through science. Okay, the science will try to. Make themselves correct. You want to? They, they do it all the time. They try to. Science you know, has always been a double-edged sword. Listen, it, it's very, very, very I, close. We have a podcast. You can. There's a little rectangle that lives in your pocket that has all the information, known information you could ever want on it. My right. computer. That's phone? only because of science. This wasn't given to us or created to us from God. I don't think that's what he's is, talking about. What I'm saying is though that. I mean, you can look at it. it was created by God because God gave us the knowledge. Yeah, yeah, everything uh, ultimately fine, but like. We had to set this thing up, and the only reason we figured out how this works is through scientific miracles. Scientists has all, science has also been this used is for not evil. a miracle. This isn't a miracle. It's fucking diodes and crystals and all this other shit. This isn't a. This is a bunch of people getting together and figuring and, and out how figure it out. Excuse me, excuse me, sir. Can you can, can you get me some crystals and dials and some, and some gold and give me a, tele, a telegraphic device? Hold on a second. The knowledge and the understanding and the and the insight of like. If you do this and this with the natural things that we've been given, it creates this. That is the miracle. That understanding that I, I can interpret that these two things are, when you put them together, are greater than these two things on their own. That 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 knowledge is a miracle. Okay. No, that knowledge is, is, is an end result of gifts that you were given. The miracle is the fact that you're able to walk upright, wipe your own ass, and, and actually have your own thought. That's where the miracle right. comes yeah. in. I'm not disagreeing with there's, there's that miracle, and there's the fact that people that so there's some people who couldn't do that, and based off of scientific breakthroughs, be people asking questions and be creating these things, that some people were able to regain the ability to wipe their own ass. Well, okay. I, I don't know. I, okay. I, to me, I think this is I'm going to give you the final word because we haven't heard from you. Sorry, the men who go, God doesn't exist and I'm a man of science, those are the ones that aren't going to be forgiven. Okay. When he came up with these prophecies? 1959. Okay, he could be talking about the Church of Scientology. That is... Yeah, we're going to carve those fuckers up next week. Uh, He's not wrong. They were were new around that time. L. Ron Hubbard. He was just saying, you know... Well, if you believe in that, you what do you say? You're not forgiven in that prophecy. Men yeah. of science will not, not be, be forgiven. forgiven. Only men of heart. Yeah, so I Good think he's take. taking a direct shot at the Church of Scientology. He was the first one to get this shit on yeah. the Church of Scientology. Yeah, but the whole thing high of, five on that one. The Good whole take. thing of not forgiven. I mean, if you end up passing away believing that, then sure you wouldn't be forgiven. But that's. That's up to God, but if they turn their life around, you know, turn their life to Jesus, then they well, could be forgiven. One thing I do got to say before, like we go to break, is one thing I, I've always learned and always realized in, in religious teaching is God will always forgive if you open your heart. So right. that's that's one thing I don't think they'll they'll sit there and. When like, do we? When are we supposed to get judged? I, we'll Why talk about that when we return from break. No, no, but uh, just shut the fuck up. I'm not trying to say something funny. I'm not. I'm being serious. Like that in the Book of Revelation says, God is 
God will come, Jesus, whatever, will come down to judge the living and the dead. The dead, aren't they judged already? Should they already be in heaven hanging out? Well, yeah, they they are. They when you when you pass, you're, you you go straight. You, you go straight to the throne, uh-huh. you know. And if you're forgiven or you lived a life and you follow Jesus and you believe in it, then it's more of like a teaching moment, like through your sin. Oh, you know, final exam. Yeah, well, no, it's not an exam. And, oh, you failed, now you go to hell. Oh, okay. No, it's not like that. If you're there, then you're there. Uh-huh. And your sin is more of like a teaching moment, you know. I but if you're more. not there and you're burning, then... You but, forgiven. Okay. I also think that they, they, they'll sit there sit again. Up. It's an eternal thing down in hell. It, it, whenever you will see God either way. It, when, yeah, whenever you, whenever Judgment Day comes, if it does, whenever Judgment Day comes, they'll they'll judge the ones in hell. They'll, he'll ju- rejudge the ones in hell. He'll rejudge the ones in purgatory. He'll rejudge the ones here. He'll and the li- dead and the living. So that's, that's, a, that's a there's a, a lot of rejudgment here. So. Maybe, but I we'll don't understand be. Why he hasn't started yet? It's a lot of work. Shut I up! Want to it off. <laughs> I'm going to flick you. We'll be right back. Uh, again, please go listen to some of our sponsors, and we'll come back and finish this episode. Thank you very much. And who wants better sex starting now? The best way to get started is go to adamandeve.com. Adam and Eve is offering 50% off just any item. But that's not all. When you select your one item, you will also get three bonus items. That includes a gift for him, a special gift for her, and a gift you'll both like. Plus six free movies. For your viewing pleasure and free shipping. There is discreet shipping as your privacy is priority. Plus 100% free shipping on your entire order. Doesn't matter how much you spend or what you buy. It will all be packaged and sent discreetly for free. Don't wait. Better Sex is just one click away. That's 50% off one item, three free gifts, six free movies, and free shipping. Bring more pleasure and satisfaction to your bedroom. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. It could be an adventurous new toy or anything you desire. Just enter code QUESTION at checkout. That's QUESTION, Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N at adamandeve.com. This exclusive offer is specific to this podcast only. So be sure at checkout you punch in the code QUESTION. That is Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N at checkout and get your 50% off one item, 10 free gifts, and free shipping. Remember, use code QUESTION. Also remember to listen to Is This Real every Sunday at 8 o'clock with new episodes starting July 16th. Remember, everybody, question everything and put that question at the end of your checkout. AdamandEve.com <laughs> Hello, this is JC3 speaking. If you want to know more about Is This Real Podcast and our parent company, Green Hour Media, then visit greenhourmedia.org. You can find and follow all of our social media pages through our website. If you love our content, then you can support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and our Patreon page. Remember, that is greenhourmedia.org. Welcome back, everybody, as we continue our episode on the prophecies of Padre Pio. Or to me, this is more like an, it's just general observations of Padre Pio. That's what I feel like they are. They're my not name really is Pio, and here are my guesses. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like they are. They're not really prophecies. Hey, I'm Padre is... Pio. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> just, the ladies uh, call me Daddy Pio. Yeah. <laughs> just telling you some things I've noticed. Padre Pio is the one in the chat. All right, so let's uh, finish off these. <laughs> let's finish off the, uh, the these these prophecies. Uh, so number ten, I am desperate. I do we not. Know. Sheesh. What what happened here? Okay. Are we TV still just recording? Went off. We're still recording. 
Uh, yeah, the screen went off. Turn the screen back on. Is it um time thing? Is it time out? No. No, no, it's not. He might have hit the thing. Uh, the the remote's there, Wes. Yeah. Keep going. The, what? The remote's there. Right there. You really like next to your hand, bro. No. Anything else on it? Hit it under. There oh, we go. There go. Now go over to PlayStation 5. Looks like that. We'll just restart. Yeah. This is how they feel like this with this. Alright, just hit the zoom in button on there. There we go. Alright. Five, four, three. And we are back with the predictions of Sir Padre Pio. Uh, and let's... Fuck it. Let's continue this episode. Let's we have see three what more Papa Pio's got for yeah, us. Yeah, Padre Pio and his observations. Uh, number 10. I am desperate. We know. I do not... Fuck you. I am desperate. I do not know what to do uh, for humanity to repent. If you continue on this path... The tremendous wrath of God will be unleashed like a tremendous thunderbolt. Now we're talking. Just like, you fuckers need to stop and fix your shit. It's not a prophecy, though. Or God's going to strike you down. We've heard that since biblical times. Yeah, it's in the the end of the Bible. Read it. It's there. I heard that in Pulp Fiction. I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean he's not wrong. He's I mean, not. Well, uh, uh, it, it's just, like, it, I think it's like, it, with him starting it off with "I am desperate," like you fuckers better fucking wake up and realize. Go wrath of Zeus on your ass. Like, and it, it's it's not it's not a, pred- a prediction. It's no. not a prophecy. It's like a plea. Like, come on, <laughs> come on, guys. For the love of fuck, do the right thing. Like, I'll follow Jesus down with mighty vengeance. Jesus. All right, number eleven. A meteor will fall on the earth, and everything will shine. That's a prophecy. That's, that's a not a prophecy. That's a fucking. That's a fucking hail mary right there, bro. It will be a disaster. Thank Much you. Much worse than than a war. Many Duh. things will be canceled. Not my Friday night book club. <laughs> Many things will be canceled. And this will be a one of the signs. Meteor, bro. Fuck. So we start off with number eleven. We start off number eleven. Why don't you pull in this? With a bang. A meteor will fall on the earth and everything will fucking shine. Like, yeah, like it's happened before, it'll happen again. We know this shit. Yeah, but everything will be canceled. It'll be a disaster. Completely and it will canceled. shine. What does that even mean? Burn. Like, well, I got a kick out of everything's going to shine. It's going to be a great disaster. Like, and this will be one of the signs. <laughs> What's more to come? Hey, if I'm on fire, I'm shining. Pretty much. I mean, you know, come on. I just love the fact many things will be canceled. Not all things, just many things. The oh, Super Bowl won't. The I Super hope Bowl the view is one of them. <laughs> what? I hope the view is one of them. <laughs> many things. That won't be canceled, you know? I mean, that'd be the only thing left on TV. You know, just like you know, the Seaside uh, Seaside had its uh, St. Patrick's Day parade yesterday, and under it, it said rain or shine. That won't be canceled. Mm. Not so. the AVN Awards. I had tickets. <laughs> Many people with the AVN right now. There might not be anybody left. That's true. We, 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 like, we lost two uh, porn stars in the last month, and there's a third one that's like in a coma. I think this is what he's talking about right here. Uh, yeah. What is going on? We'll talk off the air. Yeah, right. we'll what talk is... off the air. And here's the last one. Ready? The last one. Men will live a tragic experience. Mm. Many will be overwhelmed by the river. Many will be burned by fire. Many will be buried by poisons, but I will stay close to the pure of heart. Thanks. Thanks, Padre. Thank you. Good to know that you're looking out for yourself. He basically went in the last couple stands and he went, fuck you people. Fix your shit. I'm going to be in the shelter. <laughs> basically. You know. I, I mean, basically, I, again, like, this is. I guess. What river? The river, I yeah. Mean, right. What, what river? river are we talking yeah. about? Many, well, many, the oh, river that we cry. Experience. Like that should be the name of my autobiography. A tragic experience. Oh, <laughs> dealing with you is a tragic experience. Let's put it like this: 
you could interpret it as uh, many men will be drowned by the river. You know, if you want to sit there and say the ice caps are, are melting, flooding. I think, I think it's just another means of death. You know, it's like you say many will die by the gun, be stabbed by the knife. It's like drowned in the river, burned by this, buried by that. Burned like, by fire could be whatever the fuck you were talking about before. Yeah. But the poisons. What What do you think the poisons would uh, be? Could be uh, poisons our, food. Poison ivy. Po- our, our food, pestilence, COVID, disease, all that shit. So disease, Wait, water, and fire. He, like poison ivy? Yeah. yeah this motherfucker really said poison it. ivy? He said poison ivy. I said poison ivy. <laughs> I mean, I get, drug problems. The drug problems where we poison our poison. minds, our bodies, our spirits, our souls. The drug problems, West. fuck you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> poison oak. <laughs> gotta stay away from poison that. Poison sumac. Yeah. Don't yeah, want to get that on your that. balls. Yeah. Whoa. Jellyfish. Jellyfish. <laughs> Snakes. Steve Irwin. A lot of snakes <laughs> out there. They're poisonous. Yeah, don't bring Steve into this. No, uh, too much. Too yeah, close. Too much. Well, too actually, close. no, excuse me. Snakes are venomous. They bite and they inject. Poison is when you bite something and you get sick and die from it. So, are you Flowers. Putting... Flowers, yeah. All right. Yeah. Dad, your take on this? Uh, to be honest with you, Joey, I, I honestly don't know what the hell he's talking about. Other than saying, you know what? Death is coming. <laughs> Pick your fucking poison. Whether you're going to die by... You know, something bad you ate or a, a disease. Somebody's river's going to overflow and you're going to drown in it. So oh, I, I'll be honest. I do, I do agree with Anthony but at what this I point. like what he did say at the end, though. Fuck you all. You're on your own. I'm, I'm out of here. I do, I do agree with Anthony. I'm the padre. I think it's more of, uh, you know, like, like, fuck you all. I'm trying to warn you. Be close to fucking God. If you don't. Everything's going to unravel, and it's all going to go to fucking yeah, hell. I agree. And I think that's what basically in his entire stanza, or these entire uh, verses of which we saw. Now, granted, that's just 12 things out of an entire letter that he wrote. Are they prophecies? Greg? But are they prophecies? Tell you what. Uh, just warnings. Oh, no, he's getting up. Uh. He's getting up. What is he doing? What's that? We're not sponsored. A, uh... The fortune telling M M&M and thing here has a better from? shot of telling me a fortune than what <laughs> Padre Pio is fucking spewing. We're not sponsored. I'm not saying we're sponsored. I'm saying I would believe that the fortune that this thing gives me before I believe this. All he did was state facts that are probably going. Oh, happen. you can use it. Press the the thing on the inside. Ask it a question. You press it, right? Yeah. Oh, no, it's like a, a, a square. It's like, will I ever be rich? And you hit it, and the little dice tells you if you will or not. It does. Is Padre Pio right about his predictions? Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. Spoken by the, the M&M green. Eminem has spoken. The Eminem has spoken. All hail the green Eminem. All hail green Eminem. Because, <laughs> you know, you can't make the same sound. No, you can't, but does she Wait, ever that, white Hold boots? on, that sound is... That, that that is fucking copywritten. It could be. Does she have it's on in her white boots? I remember the Tucker Carlson was very upset they took away her white boots. Anywho, uh, predictions? Yes. Fuck no. Predictions? No. Dad, predictions? No. What's predictions? <laughs> no. Fence. Fence. He's on the fence. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say no with this. Now, again, you could sit there and maybe he's speaking about his times and what he's seeing and just observations. I would take that more than he's predicting some things. Okay, that's fair. You know, there's gonna be some asshole listening to this, like you guys don't understand what you're talking about. You're misinterpreting it all. You don't know what you're saying. This is the worst <laughs> podcast ever. Well, no, I, I, I do. We get you're writing in caps, asshole. We're not gonna read. We're not gonna... <laughs> I also get those who people care. who complain we'll about the peanut music butter for fun, money. Like, so. shut up. Yeah, lower the music. I complain about the music. I the did background. lower the music. Keep fucking lowering it. Jesus Christ! It should be at like one percent, just enough to be like, oh, that is. Nice. I'm sorry. How many of these have you edited? I'm just telling you what the people want. I'm a voice I don't of the give people. a fuck. Anywho, does anybody have anything else to add? No, no. no. We're good on this episode. Padre wasn't even a real father. That's what I'm saying. Oh, no. They can't even call him father. They have to call him Padre. He was Italian. That's what it means, an Italian father. Yeah, but look at his face. Look at that face. You really trust that face? Heck no. He looked like he, like... You know they believe he never committed a sin? Okay, look at this first of all, man. time out. He's sin- hold up, hold up. He's sin- whoa, 30 whoa, minutes whoa, before whoa, this whoa, 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 hold on. First of all, we're not going to shit all over the fucking uh, oh, a, a person. I am. 
Not to mention he was apparently blessed. Look at him. He, he sinned. Apparently, also he looked like he blood. touched kids. He was a man. Look at he was a human. Line. This man has sinned before. He was a human. Of course, he sinned. He looked like he sniffed yeah, children. But they're saying that he was he was a perfect man. He never sinned. And he also had stigmata, allegedly. So that means that God anointed him, or Jesus anointed him. Like you know, I have my you're, I choose you Shit. to carry my boo boos. Oh, okay, we're gonna end this episode right here before I fucking punch him. They gave Jesus the big alley. Because he needs to be punched. And again, he needs to no- be kneed in the face again. Yes. Anything to add anywhere. Shut t- shut his mic off. Shut his mic off right now. It's the blue mic. Thank you. Anybody else being added anywhere? Shut Izzy's mic off. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. No? Okay. We'll catch you guys next week. Uh, go to IzzyShowPC.com. Look at all of our social media stuff. Look at all of our store stuff. You can buy these right on the Is This Real PC tiktok page now we have them in our tiktok shop uh and please go listen to our uh you know we're on spotify obviously and go to our youtube page uh green arrow media and uh, if you go to any of our social medias and our website our link tree with all of all of our links is is on those things so we'll catch you guys next week everybody say goodbye that the ones who can and we will catch you guys next week. <laughs> Remember, everybody, question everything. Good night. <laughs>